Mark Crandall here of Purpose Chasers Podcast, a podcast designed to provide insights to empower individuals to break free from mediocrity and live extraordinarily. I'm so happy that you're tuning in and I hope you find great value in this podcast for you and those to come. Enjoy. And we're live. This is Mark Crandall with the Purpose Chasers podcast. And I have a very special guest with me, uh, Stephanie Stanton. She is a photographer, a coach, and just an amazing, amazing woman. And I, I could give her an introduction, but I'm going to allow her to introduce um, herself. And then before I do, I just want to create her a little bit. Um, so I don't think I've said this to Stephanie, especially not looking her eye to eye. You are kind of, I don't, know, I don't want to say the originator, but you are one of the path layers for the foundation that I'm currently on. I was, I did some coaching with Stephanie when I was in kind of the shift in my life of trying to find my true purpose. And I knew that my purpose was to help people and, and, and empower people but I really didn't know. And I did, I think it was three or four uh, calls with Steph and they were some of the most disturbing tap into my feminine energy um, <laughs> calls. And, and it really freaked me out. And she had me listen to one audio book that I remember driving. What was it? It was, um, I don't remember what it was, but they like started talking, you'll, you'll be able to tell me, but they started talking about how it was a delicate flower. <laughs> and the, the rose blossoms were shedding and I remember driving in the car and I was at a traffic light and I remember looking over at the man next to me and I like had to turn it down like, <laughs> this man can Alpha. not hear he can not hear what I'm listening to and I'm like crying in the car and like my butt my my rose bud this is like blue and I was just yeah so Stephanie I just want to thank you you. Um, for coming on and, and the influence that you've had in my life. You are, in my opinion, one of the pioneers of what I'm doing. And, you know, I follow you on Facebook and um, what you're doing with High Vibe Chick. Um, it, it's just, it just truly, you're truly, truly a blessing to this world. And I hope that you get the traction that I believe this universe has for you. So, Stephanie, you. you want to introduce yourself? Yes, but I want to say really quick, Mark, you were such a joy to work with. I, I do primarily coach women, and I've coached probably six men in the last year, and they've all been super spiritual warriors, heart-centered men, and you were just such a joy to coach with. You were so authentic all the time. You were so ready and willing to change and learn about yourself, and I just had a great time coaching with you. Just want to say that. So... Um, yeah, I am um, Stephanie Stan. I am the owner of High Vibe Chick. I do coaching and photography for empowered women. I help women brand their businesses and get to really know who they are and express themselves and own their value and, and really step into their power with money. Money's been like a big topic I've been working with my clients with. And yeah, I'm just really excited about that avenue, which I'm sure we'll talk about money mindset. But yeah, um, I, I just really help them express who they are fully through their, their entrepreneurial business. Yeah. That is, uh, man, I just, because I've watched you and I remember having conversations with you and when I first started working with you and well, actually when I first saw you, you did a presentation at this breakfast dinner, this breakfast networking event, which I wasn't a fan of at the time now to find out like I love networking events I because I the universe just throws these people at me mm -hmm. but I remember you like doing this presentation on coaching and I and, and I remember watching you and I was like I don't know what that is like that's not counseling and at the time I was I was doing therapy you know I was a th therapist at a treatment center and I was doing individual and family work and and I'm like, this is not therapy. What is this? And it, it kind of, and that was like, oh, man, what was that? Like three years ago? Yeah. Like just kicked the door in on everything that I knew about empowering people. And I think I said at the beginning of this podcast, helping people. Well, I don't believe in helping people anymore because I don't believe that anyone's helpless. Yay! Yes. You know, you empower them. And so I've watched you leave that facility and start your own thing. and 
it's been cool. And I see like the high vibe chick, you, your posts that you do. And sometimes I feel like, well, maybe I shouldn't post because I'm like, you know, a high vibe dude. And I, don't, <laughs> I don't want these chicks to be like, oh, this dude energy. Um, but I, but that, been, that you've was, been so affirming along the way. Like every time you're like, I love this. I need more of this. I'm like, yes, you are always, always, always um, validating it. So thank you so much for that. Well, you just, you know, I, there's a lot of content that gets put out on the internet and in, in the world. And um, I believe that all content has its place, but I also, based off my experience, don't believe a, a lot of it's authentic. There's a lot of get rich now or build this funnel and you'll never work again. Or like, um, you know, I follow some of them, but the lifestyle entrepreneurs, I respect their hustle. Don't get me wrong but you're selling people on sitting by a beach and you want to show them how to do that while you're making money off showing them how to do that. Hey, which is a, a dream of mine. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it is the mind as well. Maybe it's just envy coming out. So it's, and you know, when we were going back and forth, well, you know, I think we had two email exchanges on like what we wanted the topic to be. Um, I said, can we talk about abundance? Yes. Because you didn't necessarily, you didn't necessarily drop the abundance bomb on me, right? Um, and I remember you had me, you recommended that I listen to Abraham Hicks. And I remember I started, I started it three times. And it was like, I remember listening to it and like this, you know, they're drawing this spirit. And I was like, these people are on acid. Like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what is going, uh, what, you know, what is going on um, with this. But that, that I remember one night I was home alone and, that, and I was like, you know what? I'm going to power through this. I want to see what, I want to see what this is about. And I started listening to it and I was like an hour in, my wife came home and she's like, what are you listening to? And I turned it off and I was like, it's really weird. Maybe you don't, they like drew, drew this, like she's playing piano and the spirit comes and, and the spirit's talking to them. And she's like, well, what is the spirit saying? And I was like, it's, it's really profound. <laughs> it's, uh, I, I really, I think it might be changing my life. And so I talked to, you know, my coach about it. And I was like, do you know about this abundance? And he's like, oh yeah, welcome my friend. And he turned me on to a couple, a couple more books. Um, I don't think I have one of them in here. But the, the book that I'm currently reading is called Creating Money. Mm -hmm. And it's all about abundance. And so can you talk a little bit about what that means to you? Yeah, I love that you brought up Abraham Hicks because I think there's been nothing more influential to like my money mindset journey um, than Abraham Hicks. So their, their teachings, their channel teachings um, by Esther Hicks, she goes into a meditative state and she brings forth these amazing truths and lessons. And I remember, same with me, someone suggested I listen like three times and over the course of a couple of years, and I never did. And then when I did, um, something inside of me like recognized something I've always known. Like I remembered it and it was like really profound. And it still took years of me listening to it to even understand what it was saying. Now I feel like um, I have it on a whole different level. But if I could offer anyone anything like to walk away with, it's like, please just open your mind and listen to some Abraham Hicks stuff. It's all about getting into a higher vibration. I'm a high vibe chick and, and learning how to consistently stay there. So you attract better, you attract more of what you want and it just feels better. You get to just be in a better feeling state more of the time. And, you know, I think we get so consumed in this culture of like just putting our heads down and grinding it out. And at the end, we'll have a happy ending. And this is about like ha really having a happy journey, like really bringing joy and fun and play into the journey in order to manifest better and just enjoy your life. So, um, yeah, I really suggest some Abraham Hicks stuff. It's... Oh man, my journey with abundance, like I'm on this abundance. I got asked to speak at a, a mastermind uh, last week and, and the man was like, you know, what do you want to talk about? And I was like, abundance, man. I want to talk about an abundance mindset. And he's like, well, I don't know what that is. Let's not do that. So he asked me not to do it. <laughs> I'm like amped up to give this talk and how it's, you know, absolutely transformed my life. And I don't want to do that now because that would just be, that would be a selfish interview. <laughs> 
can you talk can you can you talk a little bit about how kind of the journey of starting because I know what it's like to start uh, you know to start a business and I know what it's like to persevere with an abundance mindset and have more abundance than you can imagine so can you kind of well talk I definitely about I definitely feel like I was like slow going to trust that this stuff works. I mean, I think we are at first, we're like, can I really trust that I can create what I want? So I was slow and steady leaving my nine to five job and stepping into my business. And I still work there every once in a while just because I love um, working in the field of addiction. You and I know like it's just, it's profound hard work. Um, but I was just always testing the waters and saying, okay, um, I was doing a lot of work at the time visioning clients. I remember um, bringing into my meditations a vision of women lined up outside my door, this door over here, and just waiting to come in and see me. And just really feeding um, the energy of like, there's always enough, there's more than enough. I um, started listening to a, a woman, Amanda Francis, who teaches um, abundance mindset. And I, I dug her work and she was, she's got this like valley girl accent, but she was really owning her money. Like she was just the way she spoke of it, like guiltless, guilt-free and shameless. Like I just loved it. And um, I started really using her affirmations. Like my work is of high value and worthy of massive compensation. And really just affirming that every day, my work is of the highest value and worthy of massive compensation. And I was finding that as I was doing that, people were, I, and I was also doing my clients love to pay me. That was a totally new belief for me because I used to believe my old story was if I take money from people that somehow I'm hurting them. And that, that is really a conflict when you want to be in business, right? So I started affirming every day, my clients love to pay me. My clients love what I'm about and they love to pay me. And I would start believing that. Like, yes, they love what I'm about and they love to pay me. And people were just saying, I love, literally saying to me, I love writing this check to you. And it's like, oh my God, like I'm literally shifting my reality around sales, around um, creating clients. Um, and it was awesome. I have to share though, this month I had a really amazing manifestation that made me, me go, holy shit. Do you mind if I share it with you quick? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so um, I'm moving, just like you were, and um, to a bigger house. I really felt like this house was a metaphor for my evolution, like everything on my bucket list, like I want skylights and beams and just like the whole thing, metal roof. I had like the whole list, and when I found this house, effortlessly, it just fell on my lap. It really felt like here's an opportunity for me to step into um, a greater version of myself. Like here's the house that represents who I've become. So I was really excited about it, but it also came with more fear. Here's more bills. Here's more bigger house, you know? And I remember um, saying, I'm going to make this, this transition into this house as smooth for myself as possible. So I said, all right, universe, I need 4,000 extra dollars for this move. I need 4,000 extra in addition to what I'm making just to pay the movers, pay the security, like just let's make this go. And every morning I thanked the universe for 4,000 extra dollars, 4,000 extra dollars. I only probably did it maybe five or six times. And then I get this letter in the mail, swear to God, it like gives me chills, um, that my grandmother who passed away months ago, like in November, um, had left me some money and a life insurance policy <clears throat> and they wanted me to call them and I called and there was this very old life insurance policy with my name on it. She actually bought it in 1961 <laughs> and added my name in 2004 and it was for 3980, 3980. And, um, just like literally like the month I'm asking for 4,000 extra dollars, I get, this random letter in the mail. And I just really want people to understand that if you're in a vibe of money, like you trust it can come, you thank the universe for it, you believe it like it's already here, you know it's yours already, that is faith. That's the essence of faith. If you know it when you can't see it. When you thank it and really believe it, like feel it like it's here, the universe has to yield. And it gives me chills to think that of the, of the magic of you know, something purchased in 1961 helped me manifest the month I needed it. Like, it's unbelievable. So um, it was just one example of how 
you know, when I step outside my comfort zone and I'm willing to see that, that there's more money available to me, that it's out there already and I just have to claim it and, and really feel the feeling of it and be grateful for it, that it's totally mine. And I just can't wait to see um, that emerge even more over the next couple of years in my business, in my, my clients' businesses. I'm doing a lot of um, mentoring of coaches right now, which feels really good, and natural, and God-given. And we're working a lot around that. It's just like how to just already see this, feel the success of their business before it's yet here, you know? Yeah, so I want to, oh, when you said that, something struck for me. So I want to kind of create what I'm about to say. But, um, and so when I, I remember when I first got into the abundance practice and when I was first, when I was trying to break free of some of my thoughts, which this isn't like a, a one and done for sure. Um, so I don't want you to sound like it is because I know you can explain, you can share countless stories of how I wasn't so abundantly thinking. Well, and, so, and so there's this piece of the abundance practice and like what you just said. So thank you, universe, for providing this. There's this piece there of resistance for me, right? And it's like, how can I say that I'm in the realm of the spirit while asking the universe for money? Mm -hmm. And how can I say that I'm godly or spiritual when I want money and I should be free of possessions, right? Mm -hmm. And I've gotten free of that by this kind of, and I'm going to use the word God and, and you can use whatever you want, but I've gotten free of that by state, by this, this kind of mantra that everything is, is here for the taking, yes. Yes. right? So everything is here for the taking why not me? Yes. And, and money is neither good or bad. It's neutral. It's just an energy, right? And uh, like I had that one big time because, you know, my, my parents are really spiritual and I grew up with this belief that like, if you want money, that's not spiritual. Like mm -hmm. being spiritual is to give, not wanting to receive. And so this was like a really big one for me is I really want to be like a spiritual warrior. And also I want to feel abundant. I want to be able to give to myself and to the world profoundly. And um, so it was, it was a big one to kind of loosen that. Like I can be both, I can be spiritual and abundant. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah. And, and I mean, so my vision for 2018 is to, is to touch the lives of 2 million people that need to kick the door in on mediocrity. Right. And so my kind of mantra or what I'm putting out there is thank you universe for providing me with the funds that I need to touch those 2 million lives. Right. And so there's this kind of belief system that wanting money or wanting more is greed, mm. but my motive for wanting more is not greedy. It's to provide more value to the world. Yes. And I, I've been looking for around the internet a lot for like people who are doing great, great things with lots of money. Cause there are so many profound um, gifts being given all around the world all the time. That, but we want to look at the people who get hardened and cynical with money and you know what I mean? Like who, money changes them instead of like, there was like a lot of great money things happening with people. Like, I want to get a lot of money in the hands of people like you, like really heart centered, loving, purpose driven people. Um, and such as myself, like we could do amazing things with more resources. So why not? Yeah. And, and so me, I had a lot of, I want to share this cause I, I don't think I've shared this out loud or, I mean, this is going to go on the internet. Who knows who's going to watch it or the podcast, who's going to hear this podcast. I started this podcast, right? And I had a lot of resistance around starting it because it's like, I want, you know, I want coaching clients or I want to, to work with a bigger, you know, higher end businesses. And I want my, you know, my memoir to sell. You like that? Um, <laughs> to, sell more, to sell more copies. And I want more paid speaking gigs. And I want, and I want, and I want. And then I had this shift in my, my buddy, Jesse's coming on, uh, I'll, you know, he's going to be on next week's podcast, uh, Jesse Harless of entrepreneurs in recovery. And I wanted to collaborate with him so badly, but I'm I, in my mind, I'm like, Jesse's further than me. Jesse, Jesse's like, he's got what I'm trying to get. And I can't involve him because he's going to take what, what I could grab along the way. 
And so I, I expressed that to Jesse in a call and I was like, Hey man, I really want to collaborate with you. But this thought just keeps coming up for me. And I know it's, you know, it's poop, you know, it's not, it's not pure. It's not of my heart. Um, and so, and when we had a piece like, dude, I feel, you know, I have similar feelings and like, you know, we just got to give to each other. And so I had to walk through like bringing you on, you know what I mean? Like I look up to you. I, I, I feel like you're further on the path than me. And I know that's in my head, right? But that's how I feel. And, and so I, when I started the podcast, I was like, you know what? I'm going to do hard asks. I'm going to ask people that I feel like, you know, I'm getting, I'm gearing up. I'm drafting an email to shoot out to some people that I really want on here that are hard asks, right? So I got, you know, asking you on, um, and then I, you know, I asked a bunch of friends on and I actually canceled um, a couple of podcasts because I don't want to grab the low hanging fruit. I don't want the people. And so I found myself asking people that I felt maybe were a little below me. You know what I mean? In my mind, I know it's all made up. I'm not saying that anyone's below me, um, but you're like, you're one of the hard asks. You know what I mean? Oh. Like, it's like, I'm going for... Harder, I would say, because I knew you would say yes. I want some no's. I want some, you don't have a, your following's not big enough to have me on yet. You know, I, I totally, want some of those. I totally relate to that because I'm thinking like, um, I've been loving my coaching clients these days because they're women that I'm constantly going, do I have enough to offer them? Do I have enough to offer them? And that's like huge because, you know, we've worked, um, I've worked for 10 years in the field of addiction and, and when people first come in recovery, like, they just need like love and, and your enthusiasm, right? And to feel safe. But like these women coming to me, these are high achieving, like spiritual badasses. And I'm like every day showing up going, I'm like inspired by them. Like I would love to just go out to tea with these women and just be around them. And here I am showing up as their coach. And I love that it keeps me on my edge because like, I want those hard, harder people, the ones who, are, and, and, but it's funny, they are actually more coachable and more willing to just dive in because they're very self-aware already. And they're very, um, they're in, yeah, they're just into what I'm into, but it's just so funny that five years ago, if I thought I would be with the people, I'm, I would have not felt worthy. I would have felt like, why would they even want to talk to me? You know, and that's, I think that's what makes us amazing leaders, Mark, is that we're still willing to like lean into, um, imperfectionism, you know, and, and, and then when we start comparing ourselves to others, dropping that and saying like your card, I just pulled a card for Mark before it was all about keep, um, letting yourself be imperfect because your creative ideas have to come to life. Like that was his message. Um, because there's something really great coming from him and, and doubt shouldn't be killing it. Like the more we're willing to do that and to and to put ourselves out there, like like we're becoming more of who we are, and and I think that's so wonderful. And I love watching you that because I can easily look at you and be like, he's doing podcasts, he's doing all these great things. Like it's so but, easy to start, <laughs> <laughs> but it's silly, right? Because like both of us are, are heart centered, spiritual badasses. So like, why why even go there in our heads, you know? Yeah, and I watched. Uh... And I want, to, I want to share this and then get your take on it. So I watched uh, a video that, and I'm not going to, I'm working on name dropping. I don't want to do a whole bunch of name dropping, right? Because it's just my ego's way of trying to manifest higher levels of stature. Um, but I, was, I was listening to this person who, who stated that um, likes on your Facebook page or views of your, you know, downloads of your podcast yeah, they mean something in the realm of like who, what advertisers are going to pay you to, to get a spot on whatever you're doing. But in the realm of the work that we do, it doesn't necessarily mean anything. Right. And so I'm, you know, I'm pounding through like, you, you, you know, I'm sure, but I'm pounding through and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm doing my posts this week and, you know, I just released my motivational video recording and, you know, I'm working on getting paid, more paid talks and, you know, affirming that the universe is going to send me higher level clients and da, 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 da. And I'm like, you know, what am I doing? And I had this like head sinus cold thing. And I'm just like, what am I doing? What am I doing? And I get this email and I did, uh, I, I, I did a video about it. It's going to go on my, my Facebook page. Um, 
and I, and I get this email and it's a doctor in Akron, Ohio, mm -hmm. who has watched my YouTube videos and read my book. I have no connection to her. Like I did some investigating. I'm like, I don't know how I know this woman. And she is doing a presentation amongst hundreds, if not thousands of people. I have no idea. It sounded like a big deal. And I looked it up and it was, you know, it, it's, 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 and she asked if she could use my material for <laughs> her presentation. And I was like, and I, you know, it's like kind of one of those, and I just took a seat back and I'm like, you know, without the attachment to it, you know, there wasn't like any, I did this or anything like that and there's some clicking going on is that you Steph or is that yeah I don't know what that is well, I don't know my pause oh you fixed it yeah I know it's bad I, I no, do you hear when you're talking I do hear it when you're talking but yeah I don't just know what it is. Talk, just gone yes. <laughs> it's gone now so anyways I I don't know have you had those moments where like you know I think this applies to everything that anyone does in life right and it's it's you have these moments where you're wondering if it's all worth it and then the universe goes and sends you an email like the one i got i wish mark that we could see ourselves like others see us right like hearing you intro me i'm like oh i want to be the person mark thinks i am <laughs> like uh, you know like if you could really see how powerful you are you would have no doubt ever but it's just funny because we we don't really see how we're um, how, what we're putting out. It's just really interesting. Um, I wanted to, what you were saying about um, the affirming and then trusting, I really want to talk about that for one second because I'm finding now that my work is not, is not to plan like what I'm going to do to anymore. Like I'm done, like it's like we were talking about before, like we're done helping. We just want to embody, right? And I, I'm, I'm done planning. I just need to like be of the vibration. So these days, like what I'm doing is really just like work in the money vibe, like, like being so excited for the money as if it's here, being eager. I literally sometimes just imagine like being handed like a big fat check and just squealing and jumping and being so excited of like what I'm going to do with it and how I'm going to spend it <laughs> and how I'm going to give with it and being of that vibe. The days that I'm doing that, because that's not always consistent, but the days that I'm doing that, I'll wake up the next morning from sleep with an idea. Like my intuition will say, um, pull together, like this, these are the last two ideas that came to me. I had no planning them, I was not thinking about them. But this last month, I woke up in my intuition very clearly with a, with a feeling of excitement under it, which I was like, okay, was like plan uh, a money makeover workshop for women they will all say yes. So literally I woke up, fixed my hair, put on a video, invited four women. All of them said yes. Boom, thousand bucks right there, right? Like easy money. I'm just going to talk about what I love. I'm just going to talk about money manifesting easy. Like I would just hanging out with friends. Um, and my second idea was <clears throat> to mentor coaches. I reached out to some of my clients that were burgeoning coaches and said, Hey, like I would love to share some techniques and tips that have really helped my clients with their transformation. And I just felt like they were all going to say yes. They all said yes. And I've been now, I just set up a monthly mentoring program for them. Again, like the money, I didn't have to think about how am I going to make more money in my business. I just had to be in the like feeling of it, the squealing and excitement of like, I have so much money coming in the door. And then I woke up with the idea and I took action. Like my old me would have felt that idea and doubted the shit out of it and been like, no, like that won't happen. This, you know. But I now, like, I feel like I'm trusting it so much that I really feel like they'll say yes. If you follow this, they'll, they'll say yes. And, like, my goal, and because this is a path of uncertainty you and I are walking. We are walking an extraordinary life. And being leaders in, in transformation, it is, it's uncertain where we're going to be led to. Because you and I have both said, like, use me well. I want to be used well. Um, so we don't know what's coming for us, but to be able to trust that if I am a vibrational match to what I want, it's going to be shown to me. It's going, the ideas will come. Um, one of my favorite teachers these days is Kyle Cease. I don't know if you know him. If not, no. you should totally, oh my God, you should be listening to his YouTube videos. He is a, 
He's a stand-up comedian. He has his own Netflix special, Turned Transformational Life Coach, and he's hilarious. So he's really light and funny, but like profoundly deep and spiritual. Um, so I've been listening to him a lot, and I actually got invited to coach with him personally, which is really cool too, side story. But he does a lot of um, talking about just living in your heart and trusting that the ideas will show up, and really just taking action, even though if you don't know what it's gonna look like. And the more I just really commit to that, like really like this is how I'm going to show up. I, I, I'm going to be okay with the uncertainty and just trust that what this feels like because I'm doing the vibrational work. So it's going to be okay. It's going to get me where I need to go. Um, and when those times of negative emotion come, like which totally has happened during this move for me, I'm like, ah. I just, I just notice it. And I'm like, this is not helpful. To, to my goal and just trying to drop it as soon as I notice it. Um, because that really is our only work. It's just the vibrational work, being a match, feeling how it would feel if our goals were already here. Like that's the only work. And, and that if I do anything with my morning, um, besides not kill my kids as they're going out the door running late, <laughs> it's like to, to spend as much time in the shower, on the drive to school, on the drive back from school, um, to, to imagining how would it feel if everything I want is here already? How would it feel if I already have enough money, the beautiful house, the career I want, the relationship I want? Um, because when I feel it, it just, every, my day flows. It's so much easier. Um, and yeah, it just feels like to me, that's the only work. And I, and I, I have stopped helping people. My coaching clients really just come to me because they say that, that I have this thing about me that they want, like it feels good to them. And they know I'm not interested in helping them. I just want to be an embodiment of self care, of personal value, of freedom of lifestyle, of love, of sincerity, of authenticity. And then I'll hang out with them and help them manifest their dreams. Like that, help them manifest their dreams by just reflecting back, yeah, you should totally do that. Like it's totally like what you're made to do. The, the, the coaching has become effortless. It's literally like, we're just, I'm just on this ride with them where, um, when I wasn't so fully committed to, to surrendering to the flow of my journey, I, it was much harder to coach my clients into trusting, right? Cause you attract a mirror. Like, I feel like I can really see my personal work and how my clients are now showing up. It's just effortless. It's really fun. <laughs> Steph, we're going to, I'm going to wrap the, the podcast up. And I think that that is a, an amazing note to kind of sail off on. And so I'm going to, I'm, I want to create abundance in your life and state that four new coaching clients are going to come to you based off, based off of this podcast. Um, and so where can they find you? Oh, so you can find me at highvibechick.com. Hi, H-I-G-H, vibe, V-I-B-E, chick, C-H-I-C-K.com. And yeah, if I always say my criteria for working with me is you have to be high vibe, which means you're an uplifter, you're a healer, you're very spiritual, you're in a positive thought. So you're high vibe, you are empowered, which means you are already taking personal responsibility for your life. You know that you are creating your life. You're no longer in that victim world where you're blaming everything, you know, your, your unhappiness on other people. It's really essential that you're in this place of, you know, you're a creator and that you are creating your life and then um, that you're ready, that you're ready to make a big change. I don't take clients that aren't ready to make a big transition. They're either starting their own businesses, they're getting into a new relationship, they're getting out of an old relationship, they're doing something that feels really big to them, and they just really want some support and accountability through that. But yeah, it would be my honor to work with you. Awesome. Stephanie, thank you so much for coming on, and yeah, I can't you. wait to have you on in the future. Me too. Have a great day. Thank you so much, Mark. That concludes this episode of the Purpose Chasers podcast. I want to thank you guys for tuning in from the depths of my heart. I also want to invite you to head over to my website, markcrandall.net, to see what else I'm up to and to follow me on social. I look forward to meeting you guys on the next episode of the Purpose Chasers podcast and want to leave you with this. 
Failure is a word reserved by those that quit. You are only limited by what's between your ears. Guys, don't give up. Keep striving harder and kick the door in on mediocrity and live the life of your dreams. Until next time.